In this video, we're going to be taking a look at adding and subtracting fractions. This is our second lesson from this module that we're going to be doing. <coughs> and now, when we're looking at adding and subtracting fractions, we have to get a common denominator. So on the left-hand side, we're going to be adding. On the right-hand side, we're going to be subtracting. I started you off one with a common denominator, so it was a quick, straightforward one. If you look, both of these are 7, so we're just going to move our 7 straight over. Then we have 3 plus 2 is 5, so 5 7 is our answer. Now, when you get to this step right here, you need to check to see that there's no factors that you can put into them to simplify. And in this case, we only have a 5 and a 7, so only 1 can go into those, so we're not going to be simplifying. Our next one, we're going right down the row here because I want to stay on adding for right now. And we're going to find a common denominator. So if I look, I have 7 and 10. If you can't think of a number that those two can go into each other, you just take the opposite side, so 10, and we're going to multiply this side by 10. And so the opposite side for over here is 7, so we're going to multiply this by 7. And you have to do the same thing on the top and the bottom. So 10 times 2 is 20. 10 times 7 is 70. We're going to bring our addition dot sign down. That doesn't change. 6 times 7 is 42. And 10 times 7 is 70. Okay, our bottom number is the same, so it just comes straight over. And 20 plus 42 is 62. Now, if we look at this, I see that they're both even, so I know I can divide the top and bottom by 2. 62 divided by 2 is 31. 70 divided by 2 is 35, so that's our answer. Now, if you have a hard time thinking of common denominators, there's also something called butterfly, and I'm going to show you that with the next problem. I don't care which style that you use or if you do a combination of finding a common, den common denominator and, or a butterfly, you can choose. This next one, I'm going to show you the butterfly. So I make the wings, I draw the antennas, and then here's the butt. I'm going to multiply going up. 4 times 6 is 24. 8 times 1 is 8. And this is an addition problem, so we're going to add the antennas. We're going to multiply 4 times 8, and we get 32. So the bottom is going to be 32. And then you're going to be adding 8 and 30, 24, which is 32. I have 32 out of 32, which is 1. Now, that's how you do the butterfly. It doesn't always come out that nicely for us. Sometimes it gets you really large numbers on your numerator and your denominator, and you still have to simplify. So take that in consideration, because you could get some really big numbers, and then it's harder to simplify. I'm going to go back and I'm going to do the next one with common denominators. I am going to circle this too so I can come back to it later. I don't need it right now. And I'm going to find common denominator. I know that 2 times 5 is 10. So I'm going to change this. Whatever I do on the bottom, I do on the top. 1 times 5 is 5. And I have to change this guy over here to be 10 on the bottom. So I'm going to multiply by 2 on top and bottom. So 1 times 2 is 2. 5 times 2 is 10. My denominators are the same now, so I have a 10. 5 plus 2 is 7. However, we need to remember our whole number, which is 2. So I get add that right in the beginning. 2 and 7 tenths is our answer. Okay, let's look at this next one. I'm going to circle our, my 3s for later. I'm going to bring down my 5 eighths. I don't need to change that one. Because I can make 4 be 8 by multiplying by 2. 1 times 2 is 2. 4 times 2 is 8. My denominators are now the same. I have 8 on the bottom. 5 plus 2 is 7. And then we have 3 plus 3 is 6. So 6 and 7 eighths. So that's how you do adding. Subtracting is the same thing, but we're just subtracting the numbers. I'm going to start off with a common denominator already. 
So I'm going to put 11 at the bottom. 7 minus 2 is 5. So I get 5 over 11. Our next one, I'm going to find a common denominator. And it's going to be 21. To get 21, I have to multiply this side by 3 and this side by 7. I am just taking the denominator from this side and taking it here and multiplying, then this denominator and multiplying it on this side. 3 times 5 is 15. 3 times 7 is 21. 2 times 7 is 14. 3 times 7 is 21. We have the same denominators. So we have 21 at the bottom, and then 15 minus 4 is 1. So we get 1 over 21. I'll show you what the butterfly looks like on this one so you can see it. I'm going to do my little wings, antennas, and then the butts right here. 3 times 6 is 18. 3 times 1 is 3. 2 times 6 is 12. And this is a subtraction problem, so we're going to take that up here. 12 minus 3 is 9. Just putting 18 on the bottom. <coughs> and then we have to simplify. So we're going to divide by 9 on top and bottom. Because I know that 9 goes into 9 once, and 9 goes into 18 twice. And I also know that 9 18 is a half, so that's a good thing we got that. Next one. We're going to find a common denominator. And my common denominator, instead of taking 6 and multiplying it on this side and 9 on this side, I'm going to think of a smaller one. I know I can change 9 into 36, and I can change 6 into 36. So on this side, we're multiplying by 4. On this side, we're multiplying by 6. 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times 9 is 36. 1 times 6 is 6. 6 times 6 is 36. Same numbers on the bottom. 8 minus 6 is 2. And then we're going to simplify by 2 because on the top and the bottom. I can't do that. I could have also chosen 18 to start with. I could have multiplied by 2 on this side and 3 on this side. And then I wouldn't have had to simplify. Some of you might have seen 54 because they both go into 54. There's a lot of different ways we can do this. We could have also done the butterfly on this one. And you would take 9 times 1 is 9. 6 times 2 is 12. And we got 54 right here with 9 times 6. 12 minus 9 is 3 over 54. And then we'd have to simplify by 3. And we get 1 over 9. Not 9, I'm sorry, 18. There's a lot of different ways that we could solve this problem. And if you solve the problem correctly, it will be fine. Okay. This one, guys, a little strange. And I'm going to go ahead and change them all into improper fractions for making it a little easier on us. So I'm going to take 7 times 12 plus 5. 7 times 12 is 84, plus 5 is 89, so I have 89 over 12, and then 4, 5 over 2. I can make my 2 into a 12 by multiplying by 6, so 5 times 6 is 30, 2 times 6 is 12. I have the same number on the bottom, so that gets to come across. And 89 minus 30 is 59. We have an improper fraction, so we have to divide that. 59 goes underneath, 12 goes on the outside. 12 times 4 is 48. We get a 1 and a 1. Remember, this number goes up here. This number comes here. 4 and 11 is 12. If you wouldn't have um, changed these to improper fractions, it gets a little dicey there with what you have to do because you have to borrow from the 7 and make it a 6 and add 12 to the 5. 
and I didn't think you'd want to do that. So when that happens, because if I didn't take my seven and my two with it, it gets a little weird. So change it to improper fractions and it will be a lot simpler for you. Just like the last lesson, you can find a lot of practice on this online. You can make up your own problems in practice. The most important thing when you're adding and subtracting fractions is to have a common denominator and then check to see if you can simplify. Because when in doubt, if you see that you can simplify, simplify so you don't get the problem wrong.